Are you ready, Ben's Bear? I'm ready. Then let's go. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we are, chapter 10, lesson number 10, transformation matrices. Boom, boom, boom. What is this all about? Well, let's start off with a position vector. Vector P, which has the entries 2, 1, as shown in this diagram. I'm talking about a vector, but really a position vector or a column vector is just in 2D a 2 by 1 matrix. This diagram here represents that position vector, which means this point 2, 1 from the origin, it represents vector P. Let's apply a transformation to this position vector. Again, this position vector is just a matrix. How do we do that? Well, what we do is we multiply P by a 2 by 2 transformation matrix. Boom, boom, boom. Let's say we have the transformation matrix T and it has the entries 2, 1, negative 1, 2. As I said, let's multiply them together. So let's have our transformation matrix multiplied by our vector or our matrix P. Can we do that? First of all, remember, you always need to do that check. So T is a 2 by 2 matrix. Woo! P is a 2 by 1 matrix. You always need to check that. The numbers in the middle are the same. Good. Check the numbers in the middle are the same. They are so we can multiply them together. A resulting matrix. What will it be, Owen? Good. It will be a 2 by 1 matrix. Fantastic. So let's multiply them together. So we've got our transformation matrix multiplied by this matrix here, position vector B. So we're multiplying that by the matrix 2, 1. To find the entries in a resulting 2 by 1 matrix, well, we know it's a 2 by 1. So to find this entry in the first row and the first column, we multiply the first row by the first column. So 2 times 2 add on 1 times 1. So we get 4 add 1. For this entry here in the second row in the first column, we multiply the second row by the first column. So negative 1 times 2 add on 2 times 1. That will give us... Dun, 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 Five, zero. And what we have ended up with is a matrix, but really, again, you can think of that as a position vector. And because we're thinking about it as a position vector, well, really, you can imagine from the origin this point here. So this point is going to be five, zero. And really, to go from the first point up here at two, one, to the second point, which is five, zero, what we used was a transformation matrix. Boom, boom, boom. Transformation matrices are two by two matrices that alter a point in our Cartesian or X, Y plane. The result of the transformation of point X, Y is written as X dash, Y dash, and it's known as, or it's called the image of the point. What you say is a transformation T will map our original point X, Y, and it will map it onto the image point X dash, Y dash. And the way we write this is T, our transformation matrix, will map this X, Y onto our image point X dash, Y dash. Or if you write that out with position vectors, you can say that T is going to map X, Y onto the image point X dash, Y dash. Really, to transform a point x, y using a transformation matrix, what you do is you multiply them together. However, it is very important that you pay attention to the order. When you do this, you have to take your transformation matrix and you multiply that by the point matrix. And doing that will give you the image point matrix. So you will take your point, you will write it just as a matrix that will give you an image point matrix, which you can then get a point from. So look at this example, example one. Find where the matrix, two by two matrix, five, negative two, negative one, three, maps the point negative three, one. 
So, to find this out, we know we are going to multiply them together. We're going to take our transformation matrix and multiply it by our point matrix. So this point here, this negative 3, 1, just write it as a matrix, negative 3 and then 1. To multiply them together, well, you've got a 2 by 2 matrix. You're always going to be doing this check. The first one is a 2 by 2 matrix. The second matrix is a 2 by 1. You always want to check that the numbers in the middle are the same. Woo! They are the same. Which means then the resulting matrix will be a 2 by 1. To find the entries in the first row and the first column, you multiply the first row by the first column. So 5 times negative 3, negative 15. Add negative 2 times 1. So it becomes negative 15, take away 2. To find this entry in the second row in the first column, you multiply the second row by the first column. So negative 1 times negative 3, which is 3, add on 3 times 1, which is 3. That gives us negative 17 and 6. Which means then that negative 3, 1 maps to the image point negative 17, 6. Woo! This transformation that we just applied was a random transformation. However, there are standard transformations that you need to be familiar with. The standard transformations that you will come across that can be asked in an exam are looking at reflections in the x-axis, woo, reflections in the y-axis, woo, reflections in the line y equals x, Ooh. Rotations of 90 degrees and 180 degrees about the origin. My, my, my. Rotations of any angle about the origin. Woo! Dilation, which is looking at enlargements or reductions. Or we could have a composition of all or some of the above, which we will look at in the next lesson. So let's go through these transformations one at a time. Looking at reflections in the x-axis. So to start with, we have a point P it has the coordinates x, y. We know if we reflect that over the x-axis, we will end up with this image point, so P dash, and that will have the coordinates x, that just stays the same, and we will have the negative of y. So under reflection in the x-axis, the point x, y maps to x, negative y. To find the 2 by 2 transformation matrix that takes us from x, y to x, negative y, here is what we do. So we know we are going to get out the point x, negative y. So let's write that as a matrix. So x, negative y. Another way of writing that, well, we could have x written as 1x plus 0y, and we can have negative y written as 0x take away 1y. Really what we're doing is we can take the coefficients here. So the coefficients would be 1 and 0, and the next row would have 0 and negative 1. And if we multiply that by x, y, well you can do this yourself, if you multiply 1 times x, 0 times y, it will give you the x. And if you do 0 times x and negative 1 times y, it gives you this negative y, so you can easily check that. What you can say then is the matrix associated with reflection in the x-axis is this here, this 2 by 2 matrix with the entries 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Looking at reflection in the y-axis, once again, we have our original point P with the coordinates x, y. You know if you reflect that over the y-axis, you will end up with this image point, P dash, which will have the negative of whatever x is, and y will remain as it is. So to find the 2x2 two two transformation matrix, dun dun dun, that takes us from x, y to negative x, y, here is what we do. We know we will get out negative x, y. So let's write that as a matrix. Once again, what you can do is you can think of that in terms of x and y. So how would you write negative x in terms of x and y? Well, you can write that as negative x plus zero y. With y, if you write that in terms of x and y, you could write that as zero x plus one y. Take the coefficients. So you've got negative 1, 0, and then 0 and 1. If you multiply that by x, y, again, you can easily check that. So negative 1 times x, 
add on 0 times y will just give you the negative x. If you do 0 times x, add on 1 times y, it just gives you this y. So the transformation matrix that will take us from xy to this negative xy. So in other words, the matrix associated with reflection in the y-axis is bum, 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 this matrix here. Yo. Next one, looking at a rotation of 180 degrees. Whee! Poof! About the origin. Or you could imagine that as reflection in the origin. So, you know you would start off with an original point P, which has the coordinates X, Y. If you rotate that 180 degrees, woo, you will have the negative of whatever X is and the negative of whatever Y is. So if you had the point 3, 5, you know when you rotate that through 180 degrees, well, 3, 5 would become negative 3 and negative 5. To find the 2 by 2 transformation matrix that takes us from xy to negative x, negative y, here is what you do. So, you take negative x, negative y. Again, think about writing the x and the y both in terms of x and y. So, negative x, you could write as negative x plus 0y. And negative y, you can write that as 0x, take away 1y. Take those coefficients. So the coefficients, we have negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. If you multiply that by the original x, y, you can easily check that negative 1 times x add 0 times y gives you negative x. 0 times x add negative 1 times y gives you negative y. Which means then that the matrix associated with a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin is just this matrix here with negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Woo! Next one, let's look at reflection in the line y equals x. So once again, we are starting off with a point P with an x coordinate and a y coordinate. If we reflect that in this line here, y equals x, we will get the image point P. And to find that, well, again, imagine if you had the point P and you had the coordinates. I don't know, 5, 2. If you reflected that over, well, 5, 2 would become 2, 5. So you're really just swapping the x and the y about. So we would get out y, x. To find the 2 by 2 matrix that takes us from x, y to y, x, here is what you do. So the image point, we know that is going to be y, x. So let's write that as a matrix. Again, take the y and take the x and write them in terms of x and y. So y you can write as 0x, add on 1y. And the x you can write as 1x plus 0y. Take those coefficients. Take them out. You've got 0, 1, and 1, and 0. If you multiply that matrix by this matrix x, y, you can check once again. 0 times x, add on 1 times y, gives you y. And 1 times x, add on 0 times y, just gives you the x. So if we apply this transformation matrix, 0, 1, 1, 0, to x, y, we will get out y, x. So really, the matrix associated with a reflection in the line y equals x is just our 0, 1, 1, 0. Woo! Next one, looking at dilation, which is the enlargement or reduction centered on the origin. A dilation just resizes a shape. When the scale factor is 2 and the center of the dilation is the origin, as you can see here, the mapping of a point, say x, y, well, what happens to that point? Well, we've got this point with an x coordinate and a y coordinate. If we apply a scale factor of 2. Well, we're looking at this length from the origin, this position vector, and the scale factor of 2 will just double that length. So our image point will end up p dash, which will become 2x and 2y. So we're doubling the length of that position vector, which means then that xy will map to 2x and 2y. How do we find the transformation matrix associated with that? Well, if you write this point here as a matrix, so 2x and 2y, again, write each part in terms of x and y. So 2x you can write as 2x plus 0y, and 2y you can write as 0x plus 2y. Take those coefficients. 
So 2 is 0, 0 and 2. If we multiply that matrix by the matrix x, y, we can easily check 2 times x add 0 times y will give you 2x. 0 times x add 2 times y will give you the 2y. So the matrix associated with this dilation will be 2, 0 and 0, 2. Generally speaking, under the general dilation of a scale factor k, that again is centred on the origin, you will have the matrix k, 0, 0, k. So, if you had a scale factor of 5, well, the matrix associated with that would be 5, 0, 0, 5. If the dilation was 112, you would have 112, 0, 0, 112. You get the idea. Next one, looking at a rotation of 90 degrees about the origin. Bum, bum, bum. It's important to note that positive rotations are always, 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 always anti-clockwise. So once again, we're going to start off with point P, which has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. If you rotate that 90 degrees about the origin, how do you get the image point? Well, you may be able to work out that if you had, for example, 5, 2. The coordinates, once you rotate that 90 degrees about the origin, are 5, 2, would go to negative 2, positive 5. So really you take the negative of whatever y is and you would take x and that whatever x is would become your y. Under a an anti-clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin, our x, y maps to negative y, x. Again, we need to find the transformation matrix associated with that. So we can write our negative y, x as a matrix. Take the coefficient, so once again, write down the negative y and the x, both in terms of x and y. So negative y, you can write as 0x, take away 1y. x, you can write as 1x plus 0y. Take those coefficients, so 0 and negative 1, 1 and 0, and multiply that matrix by the matrix x, y. If you do that again, you can check 0 times x, add negative 1 times y, gives you the negative y. 1 times x adds 0 times y will give you that x. So the matrix that allows us to go from x, y to negative y, x. So in other words, the matrix associated with a rotation of 90 degrees about the origin is this one. Hello! This one. Hello! Look at me. 0, negative 1, 1, 0. Next, rotation of any angle about the origin. So we looked at 180 degrees, we looked at 90 degrees, but it won't always be that. You may be moving 30 degrees or 60 degrees or however many degrees. So if a point P is rotated through an angle, say theta, degrees about the origin in an anti-clockwise rotation, the matrix associated with this, well, our point P, which has the coordinates x, y, will move and P dash, the image of it, will just move and it will become the image of x and the image of y. The matrix associated with this, which is on the formula sheet, is given by cos theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, and cos theta. And you can work this both in degrees and radians. So, a summary of all the transformation matrices. These are the ones you need to know or be able to work out. So, reflection in the x-axis is the matrix 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Reflection in the y-axis is negative 1, 0, 0, 1. Reflection in the line y equals x would be 0, 1, 1, 0. A dilation with scale 2 and center 0 would be 2, 0, 0, 2, which means scale k, whatever your number is, would be k0, 0, 0, k. A rotation of 180 degrees about the origin is given by negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. A rotation about the origin of 90 degrees is given by 0, negative 1, 1, 0. And a rotation about the origin of theta radians or theta degrees was given by cos theta, negative sine theta, sine Theta, cos theta. This bottom one is the only one that's on the formula sheet. Let's look at some examples with that then. So, example two. 
Part A. Write down the 2 by 2 matrix associated with an anti-clockwise rotation of pi over 2 radians about the origin. And part B, hence find the image of point P, which has coordinates x, y, under this rotation. So the first thing that we need to think is the matrix associated with an anti-clockwise rotation. Just remember, positive rotations are always, always, always going to be anti-clockwise. So a matrix associated with an anti-clockwise rotation of pi over 2 radians about the origin. We can think of that and you can think, right, well, that's just 90 degrees. So really, you can think about this matrix here with 0, negative 1, 1, 0. However, if you forget that, what you can do is you can use this matrix here because this one will be allowed for any number of degrees or any number of radians. So you can either go straight to the answer, which is 0, negative 1, 1, 0, or what you can do is you can sub pi over 2 into the cos theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. Working that out, so you would get cos of pi over 2, so really the cos of 90. For that, I would just be thinking about the graph. So if you think about the cos graph, you know the cos of 90 is just going to be 0. Cos of pi over 2 here, again, it's just going to be 0. For sine pi over 2, again, I would just be thinking of a sine graph. And we know the sine of pi over 2, or the sine of 90, is going to be up at 1. So this would be negative sine pi over 2, which would give us negative 1. And this one here, sine pi over 2, which would just give us 1. So this here will be our answer. Part B, find the image of the point x, y under this rotation. How on earth do we go about doing that? Well, what it means is that we've got this point and we want to apply the transformation. And what you'll remember is at the start of this lesson, we found that the order is super, super important. Woo! So you take your transformation matrix and you multiply that by the point matrix. And that'll give you the image point matrix. So our transformation matrix will be the 0, negative 1, 1, 0. Our point matrix... So if we write this point x, y as a matrix, we will have x above y. And if we multiply them, well, just remember, this here is a 2 by 2 matrix. This here is a 2 by 1 matrix. Always check that the numbers in the middle are the same, which they are. Yeah! And a result will be a 2 by 1 matrix. To find the answer, what we're doing is we're multiplying this entry here is in the first row in the first column. So we multiply the first row by the first column. So 0 times x, add negative 1 times y, gives us this negative y. This entry here that is in the second row in the first column, you multiply the second row by the first column. So 1 times x, add on 0 times y, gives us this x. Because we get out the matrix negative y, x, we can say that the image of the point x, y is the image point P, which will be negative y, x, under this rotation. Woo! Example 3, write down the 2 by 2 matrix associated with a clockwise, clockwise rotation of 30 degrees about the origin. What's the first thing that you are noticing, Ben? Brilliant. A clockwise rotation of 30 degrees about the origin is equivalent to an anti-clockwise rotation of how many degrees? 330! Perfect. So, a clockwise rotation of 30 degrees has to be written in terms of an anti-clockwise rotation, which will be 330 degrees. So, we can say then that the matrix associated with an anti-clockwise rotation of 330 degrees about the origin is... Just remember, it's on the formula sheet. You have cos theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. So putting in the 330 degrees, we get cos 330, negative sine 330, sine 330, and cos 330. Working that out, we end up getting this 2x2 two two matrix here, which has the entries root 3 over 2, and then 1 half negative one half and root three over two. Hence, the two by two matrix associated with a clockwise rotation of 30 degrees about the origin is just this matrix here. Root three over two, one half, negative one half, and root three over two. 
Try some of these questions just in the booklet. You're looking at page 31. It's the transformation matrices. Boom, boom, boom. Best of luck. Bye. Woo. Have fun.